Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be doing part two of this task planner series with PyQt5. This is a four part series in which part two is specifically about this calendar widget. So the calendar widget is one of the different UI elements provided to us by PyQt5. In this video, this is going to be a short video because this is pretty simple. We're going to be working with the widget itself and we're going to be seeing what happens when we change the date and how we can change the code to respond to that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do actually is go back to our Qt Designer. So last time we talked about the Qt Designer, which was this guy right here. This enables us to drag and drop different UI elements onto our screen so that we can design our interface. So we have the calendar widget right here. We can see that the property itself has the object name of calendar widget. This name is pretty important. This is how we'll be referring to the widget through the code. All right. This is the widget. One thing we can do here to maybe make it look better is we can change the font. So I'm just going to say the font um, should be 13. And now this is purely for aesthetic reasons, just to make it look a bit bigger. Maybe this is actually too big, so we can go for 12 or 11. So I'm just going to go back to 12. All right, so now that we have this, we have the calendar, it's part of our interface. Nothing more that we need to do from the design perspective. So the calendar is already there. If you haven't seen the previous video, I highly recommend you go and see that first because that's how we set up this entire interface. Or, or if you're only interested in the calendar widget aspect of it, no worries, feel free to just um, follow along with this video. All right, so we said that the property object name is calendar widget. Why is this important? This is important because when I go back to my code, I will be referring to it using this very same name. So I will say self dot calendar widget and then dot other things so i'll be doing other things but what is this really this is me saying that this class has its own attribute called a calendar widget where did this come from we haven't defined it before that's very true this came from this load ui function right here so this UI, load UI function loads the main.ui file, which is the file we created using PyQt5 designer. It loads it into this class, into our object, and then it becomes a variable for this class, right? So now I can actually call it and work with it. So I can work with the self.calendar widget. Great. So what do I want to say here? This is the constructor. Why am I talking about the widget? Well, here's one thing I want to do. I want to link this widget to a function that will execute whenever I modify the date. I'll say dot selection changed. By doing so, I'm saying that when the date selected on my calendar is changed, I want to do a certain thing, right? So what's the next thing I'm going to say? I'm going to say connect. So this will connect me to a function that will execute when the selection is changed. So I can go ahead and call this function self dot calendar date changed. All right. Now that I have this, what I can go and do next is I can define calendar date changed. And this will be the function that I'm calling at this part right here. All right. So again, what I'm trying to say is I'm saying when the selection is changed, connect me to this function. So now just to demo that this is working, all I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the sentence that the calendar date was changed. All right, now we can run it and test it. So I'm going to run it. Now we have the interface and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the calendar date. And as you can see here, in, in the terminal, you can see that the calendar date was changed is being printed. So this is perfect. This is working. Now, now that we have this, let's talk about the future. So what do we want for the future? In the future, in the next video, what we want is that when this calendar date is changed, I want to change the task list here because each day has its separate task list, right? You don't have the same to-do list every single day. So for now, this is a placeholder. We're printing that the date was changed. However, one more thing we want to do is we want to extract the date that was selected. Why is that? This is because we will need it for the database. So I want to know which date was selected here. All right. 
You don't have to worry too much about why we need it for now. Let's just say we need it for the database. And for now, let's just extract it and print it back out. So I will say date selected. Okay. And the date selected will be, let's get started with self.calendar widget. So the same thing we said here, this refers to the widget we have on the screen. And we're going to say selected date. Now, selection changed and select selected date are actually functions of this calendar widget class that we are actually not directly seeing. So this calendar widget class, if you go back to the PyQt5 documentation, you will see this is an existing class provided by Qt widgets. OK, so I can import this here so I can say Q calendar widget. So this is something that exists and it has these functions. It has the selected the selection changed and the selected date. So I'm only exploiting these functions and using them in my code. This is how I'm able to write this code. OK, I'm not creating these functions myself. They exist in the Q calendar widget class. All right. For now, I'm going to leave this to be selected date and I'm just simply going to print out. So date selected and then I'm just going to add the date selected. OK, let's run it and see actually what the output would be. So now I'm running it again. I'm going to change so you can see. I changed the date and what we're getting printed is pyqt5.qtcore.qdate. So this is the type and then it has these properties. So the year 2022, the date 11th of Jan or 12th of Jan. So it looks like this. Why, why is that? This is because this selected date function is returning a Q date. This is the type of what it is returning. Now, here, when adding it in the print, I'm converting it to a string. However, converting it to a string is not enough. Now, what's the next step we want to do? We want to convert it dot to pi date. So by calling this function, let's again try to test it. And I will change this and we can say the date selected and it looks like this. So this is actually a pi date object. But one thing we need to be careful about is that here, it was converted to a string because it was added to the print statement. Later on, we will need another function to convert it to a string. All right. Another thing we can do, let's just um, do this for the sake of the demo. For now, we don't really need it, is call this um, strf time to be able to format it the way that we wish. So here you can see that it is formatted in the way year, month, then day, right? This is actually the best format for a software developer. It's not the American format. It's not the global format. It's simply year, month, day. This is the standard. Why do we use this? Because this is the easiest way to sort. So when you sort your dates, you can easily sort it by and have it in the correct order when it's saved like this. All right. Now, let's say I don't want to save the year. I want to only have. Um, OK, I'm typing here. So. Let's just stop it. Let's say I don't want to save the year. I only want to have um, the month and the day. OK, now I can run it again. And if I test it, you can see that it says um, month one and then the day 12. So by using this function right here, I am saying the format for the date. And now this format can be many things. You can actually maybe only print um, the year. So if I just do this and I press here, you can say date selected is 2022. Mm -hmm. So this depends on you and what type of information you want to save. Again, in our case, we're OK with the uh, with the default one. So I can actually just erase this and get the default. So this guy. So this is useful for a database. But again, as I showed you, you can use this function to change the format. All right, that's really it for this video. This was a short one because the calendar widget is pretty simple. Now we know how to work with the calendar widget, how to um, call a separate function once the date is changed and how to extract the selected date from the calendar. Tune in for the next video where we will be defining the checklist right here for our daily task planner. And the video after that, it will be a database integration so that we can persist our data in a database. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye bye.